Here's some comments about Stewart's presentation of conservation of energy in his multivariable calculus book. Um, it's a good presentation. I just wanted to gloss it a little bit and add to it a little bit. Um, we're in the situation where we're interested in conservative force fields and, un and understanding why that word is applied. And so we have the most fundamental thing from classical or sort of Newtonian presentation of classical physics, F equals MA, and written out more explicitly, that's you look at the um, position of a particle, you calculate the force field, so that gives you the force on the particle at that point, that's equal to M times the acceleration, R double prime of T. One thing that he doesn't make su super clear here is that this is only true if this is the only force that's acting. Uh, usually it's the sum of all for forces that gives you MA. So we're assuming that there's just really one uh, force field that's making the motion. Or you could say, if there's more than one force field, we're kind of say, well, what if the force field we're interested in were the only motion, what would happen? Okay. So um, what the, the overall mathematical point here is that this is a derivative. It's the derivative of velocity. And if F is a certain kind of derivative, namely a gradient vector field, you're going to be able to get sort of similar um, purchase on this on both sides, that somehow F being a gradient vector field is going to allow you to integrate once, and this being a derivative always is going to allow you to integrate that once as well. And if you can do the same thing on both sides, it's going to be nice. And so that's, that's sort of a mathematical thing. Okay. So again, uh, oh, I should have said at the start, if you haven't read this through already, you should do it now before. I'm not going to do every little detail. You should read it through to yourself first. So what we do is we calculate the work done by the force on the object. And really, in this, in this book, we don't actually have a good idea really of what work is until this point. Why do we calculate that? Why is that interesting? Well, this is going to tell us a lot about what that is physically. Well, if it's the only force acting, then uh, we just parameterize. We get F times the velocity. Mm, that's interesting. That might relate to acceleration. You betcha. We put in F equals MA. And here, we get acceleration dotted with velocity. When we were analyzing curves, we looked at that. And what that does is it takes the acceleration, and it purposely looks at only the part of acceleration that's speeding up or slowing down. We're not really looking at turning here. And if we have some intuition from physics about work, we know that, that forces that tend to turn things don't do any work. And so that's what's going on here. And it's very similar to what we lo looked at with the curve geometry. And in particular, what we see is that this is the derivative. It's one half the derivative of the velocity dotted with itself. Wonderful little mathematical point about the product rule applying to dot products. So it's cool physically, and it's also cool mathematically. And this is exactly what we love to see. It activates the fundamental theorem the integral of a derivative. And so that means um, it's the derivative of, they just rewrite it, the magnitude squared. So it's just the change of one half the velocity, uh, the speed squared, really, the magnitude of the velocity squared, times m, which comes through as a constant. And so that's just written out here. So you get one half m times the change in the velocity. So what th this is tells us a lot about work, what work is doing. Work is adding to a bank account of some stuff, and that stuff is calculated by one half mv squared. And of course, that's what we call the kinetic energy. So we define this to be the kinetic energy, and then what we've discovered is that work, which is in, in general has to be a, an, an integral, is very simple. It's really just the difference. It's just you're adding stuff into the bank account. So the work, if it's the only force acting, the work is always going to contribute to a change in kinetic energy. And this is such a huge deal. I mean, it's really it's so fundamental to so many applications of calculus of seeing something that in principle has to be added up bit by bit by bit along some curve and then get another expression of it as, oh no, just look at the initial state and the final state and subtract. And it's just like balancing your checkbook. That's a lot easier than doing integrals. So that's just using the fact that this was a derivative of something. This is, you know, the really the key step was really from here to here that we got the der in the integral of a derivative out of this, and that's really coming basically from the fact that the acceleration was a derivative of velocity. So what about if? Let's see if I can get this in the screen here. Make sure. Eh, I guess it's focused enough. Okay. Um, what about 
if f is a conservative force field. So if it's a gradient of little f. Okay. Or equivalently, we know that another way to say that is if it's if its integral is path independent. Okay. If its integral is path independent, we know that we could take two different curves and from say A to B, and we know that the integral of f dot dr on C1 here, say that's curve C1, this is C2 is the same as the integral of f dot dr on c2. Well, that has the same feel, doesn't it? It doesn't depend on the details of the process. It just depends on the final and the initial and final state. And indeed, it's very, very similar because we can use, uh, we can make it more explicit by using the fact that if this is a gradient of a vector field, of a, of a function rather, then we can get a purchase on that. We can use the FTC for line integrals now instead of ordinary FTC. Now, in order to make things work out nicely, we'll see why in a second, we actually say let's let P for potential be negative, the, U, the, uh, the mathematical potential. And to be honest, they never use, physicists never use P for potential. They use U or V, but anyway, this book uses P. And so we have F is minus the gradient of P. We'll see why in a minute, why the minus sign. Okay, so now we use uh, FTC for line integrals. The integral of F is the integral of a gradient. So now integral and derivative cancel out. And I get minus the change in the potential energy. And that minus switches it to be P of A minus P of B. So the work was K of B minus K of A in the opposite order. That's the amount we've added to the potential energy bank account. This says it's the amount we've drained out of the, uh, sorry, that was kinetic energy bank account. This is the same as the amount we've drained out of the potential energy bank account. That's a really nice way to have things because we just say, oh, we have these two accounts. And so what we had originally for potential and kinetic is the same. The sum of those is the same as what we have at the end. So that anything that gets drained out of potential goes into kinetic and vice versa. So that's the minus sign has a real nice use in that we can express it in this very nice way. The sum of the total energy, potential and kinetic, is constant as we go. Um, so, um, and the, the usefulness of this in physics, if you've taken physics course that uses this, is exactly what I was saying before of not having to worry about the details of the process, how long something took, exactly what was the trajectory, what exactly was the equation of the forces that was happening as you were doing it. If you know you have a conservation law, it can be far easier because you just need to know what was the input state in terms of potential and kinetic, what was the output, and it gives you a way to solve lots of problems.